so as you see there chapter 2 is what we are going to deal in this particular session financial and accounting systems as the name goes by since we are in the field of finance now this is another important aspect that we have to consider as to what exactly is the theme of this particular chapter now there are multiple types of systems if you want to use individual systems for doing certain tasks you can do that but if you want to use one system or one software for all that also is quite possible which is what is the theme of this chapter called as integrated or edp as you see there integrated non integrated systems so before we get deeper into the discussion of integrated and non integrated systems we have a few points that we can understand in the beginning of this chapter very easy so i want all of you to stay very focused it's not at all a difficult topic so let us take all those into consideration and then we will go ahead and discuss many more things so first of this is going to discuss about integrated and non integrated systems but we will get to the discussion very shortly uh, because first we need to understand a few more terminology before we do anything right you see there two words integrated and non integrated but before we go there what do you mean by system process i guess we all know is nothing but a sequence of steps to finish something when we want to do a sequence of steps that is only called as process so a uh, couple of easy things and then we have classification of data into master data and transaction data which we already again know so i think if there is anything new we will stop by and look at it but otherwise it's going to be a very safe read is what i guess okay let's start the first definition which is what is a system a set of principles or procedures for which something is done so you know what a system is right we follow uh, generally we use the word system to represent anything that follows a particular pattern right from a human body human body has so many systems respiratory system uh, we have the neuro system we have the digestive system means what a series or a sequence of procedures which are taken so a set of actions that are done to achieve something that we are system a set of principles or procedures as per which something is done which is nothing but an organized scheme or a method so so many words are there for the word system the word system can be explained in simple way okay what is the simple way is nothing but a set of detailed methods it is nothing but a set of detailed methods procedures and routines set of detail methods procedures and routines created to carry out a specific activity to carry out specific activity perform a duty or solve a problem it's an organized purposeful structure that consists of interrelated and interdependent elements two things interrelated and interdependent elements we can even call them as components parts whatever simple word is parts components is the most polished word so components also mean parts only different parts right these elements continuously influence one another directly or indirectly to maintain their activity and the existence of the system to achieve the goal of the system so that's exactly what we are also looking at because that's what we also want you know the system should perform and do or finish some kind of an activity what is it finishing what is it doing that's what is the first and foremost idea now all systems generally have you now there is a process called ipo which is input process output and then storage of course followed by what is called the feedback now you know what a feedback means feedback here is something which is a mechanism of telling you what is good about it what is bad about it you all know what a feedback is in system context i'm telling so whether the program is helping you achieve something or is it not helping you achieve something what is it like its existence does it fulfill the purpose these are all the points that we need to really understand again okay so this is the story about what we look for in terms of uh, the steps involved in every system every system will have what four i p o s it's called input process output and storage always followed by a feedback mechanism underline that it has input output and feedback mechanisms they maintain an internal steady state maintain an internal steady state means as a system what is designed will continue to be the same irrespective of 
the changing external environment we all know this and have discussed thousand times that external environment is changing ever changing that is it means it's infinitely dynamic we have come across this point so many times right systems may consist of subsystem which are also a part of larger system if our entire human body is a system then digestive system respiratory system the neuro system all these are subsystems now subsystems by itself can behave like a system which is a part of a larger system okay so i can simply you know explain you that like uh, the take the example of a car now when you have a car you have wheels you have the engine you have so many things done there right so all of those on their own are systems but when they all work together as one then car as such will again be termed as a system so therefore the larger part is called as the system now let us remember this very carefully so that you won't have a problem let me just draw it across for you this let's say is the system okay anything here will be called as a subsystem which is nothing but the subsystem now this subsystem is nothing but the part of the larger system okay this is part of the larger system as to what happens now multiple subsystems like this will come up to a system now this subsystem alone can be viewed as set of interrelated components okay subsystem alone can be viewed as set of interrelated components they can be viewed as a set of interrelated components but will on their own will they fulfill something yes but is it the whole idea no system is something a broader idea so that is what is a slighter difference between system and subsystem i hope you understood what this difference is between system and subsystem now comes the other interesting part that we have to understand which moves on to talk about what is a process let's go with that come on second part what is a process okay i think the last line also have to uh, be read system stop functioning when an element is removed or changed significantly obviously you know like say you pulled off something from that car that i gave the example entire car may not work are what is there sir one tire only we pulled out now with other three tires it can go what is it car or auto so you cannot take off one tire or be like oh, remove sir that engine you remove let the car be. so there are there are all the components unless all of them come together the car is not going to move so if you remove sometimes some parts of the entire system maybe the entire system can come to a stand still together they allow understanding and interpretation so that's the story behind what a system is very simple definition let's actually concentrate now on what is a process it's very easy because we already discussed in many places but here in the systems engineering arena that is in the context of systems not about others and you know what are these and what are that we are not talking about all of them we are just talking about systems arena a process is defined as underline sequence of events what is a process a process is defined as a sequence of events that use inputs to produce outputs a sequence of events that uses inputs to produce the outputs this is a broad definition this is a broad definition and can include sequences as mechanical as reading a file and transforming the file to a desired output format or to taking a customer order which is you know like sales process taking customer order we procuring goods the purchase process so what is the process a sequence of events which will start from input and then produce the output from a business perspective a process is nothing but underline these two words coordinated what do you mean by coordinated one connected to the other one piece connected to the other is called coordinated from a business perspective a process is a coordinated and standardized flow what is it it's a coordinated and standardized flow of activities performed by either people or machines which can traverse traverse means travel across which can traverse functional or departmental boundaries to achieve a business objective and create value 
for both internal and external customers okay a process is nothing but a coordinated and standardized flow of activities performed by people or machines which can traverse means travel across functional or departmental boundaries to achieve a business objective and create value for internal or external customers then let's move on with these two definitions just the opening part of the chapter i don't think i have to explain you master data and non master data so i can give you to read this one so what will we do you can just take a quick read i'll give you a couple of minutes here fast just master data here and you will also have transaction data in the next page i will move it across but quickly read what is there on screen here which is called the types of master data first you finish reading that because as latest as a couple of classes we have discussed what is master and transaction so i am just asking you to read from the screen as to what is master data very quick and just in fact i should say cross check with what we learnt a couple of days back come on quick okay keep it fast master data so you know these words relatively permanent okay so nothing to panic there same definition actually lot of today's concepts are uh, you know revision for you which is why i am uh, little relaxed because somehow i hope you know all these concepts because you discuss some of them in costing and other places so as defined above master data is what underline relatively permanent data which is not expected to change again and again will it not change at all no it may change but not very frequently it may change please underline that also so if somebody says master data will never change that is wrong it may change it's given it's relatively permanent data which is not expected to change again and again but it may change but not again and again in accounting systems in accounting systems there may be the following type of master data what is it first one accounting master data oh no so much of accounting master data we know because ledger names don't change sundry data sundry data same way sundry creditors capital account reserves and surplus fixed assets so many master names or master records can be created like say capital so what does accounting master data consist of all those ledgers groups cost centers etc capital is created once and is not expected to change amount will change but as a ledger it won't change sales purchase expenses income ledgers are again created once and not expected to change again and again so you know what accounting master data is date amount all those will be transaction data guys mostly static data i want to introduce a term here which i want you to you know kind of write it down because later you will find that coming across in some other chapters or some other place so want you to be very thorough now only this when you are talking about master data it can also be known by another name called as standing data which means something that does not change very often and it is uh, relatively permanent relatively permanent you can even say static but static means you know it's not permanently static right so we say static that's all okay please make a note of these words master data is also called standing data because a couple of chapters later they will use this term standing data don't wonder at that time what it is and all that okay they mentioning about this only clear now second one is inventory master data inventory master data includes stock items stock groups go downs inventory voucher types stock item means each individual stock item stock item is something which is bought and sold stock item is something which is bought and sold for business purpose trading etc example if a person uh, if he is into a business of dealing in white goods white goods means electronics okay if a person is into the business of dealing in white goods stock items shall be tv fridge ac etc for a person running a medicine shop you know what medicine shop is all the medicines will be the stock items under them again they'll have a group okay so basically it's like that payroll master data what about payroll master data 
name of the employee permanent address of the employee gave this example also payroll is another area connected with accounting and payroll is a system for salary calculation and recording of transactions related to employees master data in case of payroll master data in case of payroll can be names of employees groups of employees salary structure pay heads i hope you know all this right these data are not expected to change frequently obviously you know name and uh, uh, which which category they belong to what sort of an employee salary structure will change no sir salary may change monthly salary structure definitely will change because when you get promotion and all that the salary structure also will change but not very often no that fellow once in two years or some whenever promotions are due or whenever hike is given that time salary structure will change but for that it's all uh, you know semi permanent only no so you call it as master data then example employee created in the system employee created in the system will remain as it is for a longer period of time his or her salary structure may change but not again frequently pay heads associated with his or her salary will be relatively permanent last one is called statutory master data of course nothing is under your control here because uh, statutory means government compliances uh, rates are defined by the government everything this is master data relating to statute or law it may be different for different type of taxes like gst in gst only so many rates are there uh, nature of payment deducted at tds tax at source okay this data shall again be relatively permanent no sir government changed government what will they do daily they'll change the rate so whenever they change the rate you also adjust the master data but till then it's something that which does not change very often we don't have any control on this as they're made by government and not by us okay got that point so in case of change in tax rates forms or categories we need to update our master data but for that we won't go and pester our master data basically whenever there is a change that is requested in the master data authorized person should do i think enough number of places you already read the master risk which says that unauthorized people may end up changing the master data and we don't want that to happen and that is exactly why we have to establish the controls now anything other than master data which changes very often will automatically be called as non master data you don't need my help there or you know it is not even rocket science so straight away you can read what consists i mean like what <coughs> what consists of non master data quickly then we will discuss quickly what is our personal master data when it comes to you and me what's our personal master data and the big question which can come in the exam is why master and non master data but before that i want you to quickly do what's there come on read up about non master data very fast So don't tell me that you know you are making us read. I have already explained this in detail in the first chapter, which is why I am making you read now. Non-master data is called transaction data. First thing you understand that. Okay, come on, very quick. Non-master data. It's a data which is expected to change frequently, again and again, and not a permanent data. amounts recorded in each transaction shall be different every time and the expected change again and again date recorded in each transaction date recorded in each transaction is expected to change again and again and will not be constant in all the transactions to understand the concept of master data and non master data let us correlate with a simple example with our own selves in the example our name name of parents we expect that to be not changing no name of parents and all address blood group gender okay i'm not talking anything ha huh? yes or no our name name of parents address blood group gender date of birth etc is a personal master data not expected to change but all of those except blood group you know unless okay anyway that's very far all these are name and all unless people ha huh, again sir how can you tell name does not change lot of people change their names yes quite common that to most of women after marriage they now want to continue with a different name or they want to modify their existing name to different name uh, quite possible i am not saying never this will happen i am just saying these are permanent in nature long time our address may change but not frequently at contrary to this 
some information of which may fall in the category of non master data are which is not permanent data date of birth is master data but age age is moving every second so if you ask me today what is your age and tomorrow if you ask me the same question it will be different so age changes one hour later if you ask i am older by one hour all of us are like that only age is non master data weight is non master data it keeps changing maintaining weight as a master data will be a fitness goal okay if you understand what i said so it is not a master data i am telling you that could be your fitness goal so to keep it within a particular range for years together so tough task not very easy at all not at all easy okay i mean i do that too, so i know so i try to keep it no that's up to a personal choice there is no force if you want to keep the weight in a particular range you also have to abide by that so many people don't do that right so they at at one point of time they tend to do overeating then uh, suddenly they'll become fitness conscious and then they'll reduce the weight then again they'll get back to their old ways we've seen a lot of people like that it's quite common so because it keeps changing our moods keep changing our food habits keep changing our uh, you know food patterns they get change because of so much of the workload nowadays some people work in night shift they don't eat properly a lot of problems are there so which leads to all this anyway our likes and dislikes again are non master data so they keep changing and changing the big question for this particular hour is why should we have master data and non master data why can't we have only one and close the story why should you have two separate master and non master data now i think by now you would have understood if there are some sacred aspects which need not be entered every time when you know that they won't change for example payroll name address until you intimate the payroll team that there is a change in your name or address or anything else every month should they type the same thing why should they type so what you want to avoid the wastage of time in doing the same thing which is adding no value unproductive work typing the same thing again what will you get nothing so therefore where semi permanent data is there if you keep it as master data saves you a lot of time not only that few other advantages are also there we will now go ahead and read why we should have master data and non master data this could be a question in the exam guys so stay very alert basic objectives of accounting system is to record input okay in the form of transactions and generate output in the form of reports now transaction can be purchase transaction sale transaction basically whatever happens we record it in the form of a transaction and then get the reports in the form of balance sheet pnl and all that and we are all doing accounting for years so now they are telling this which is not a great wonder for us but what is the new fact that we are learning from here which is about master data and non master data so that part let's see clearly master data is generally underlined not typed by the user you guys know what a drop down list is right drop down list let me make an important point here a master data is not typed why is master data not typed because it's already input into the system so it is chosen from a drop down i think as latest as in the previous class i gave you examples of billing in dmart and other supermarkets right when you go to a, a particular supermarket they just scan now already a list of scanned master data will be there inventory master list master inventory list now the moment you scan one item from here which will be as part of transaction so if some customer bought this good and you scan it it will go match to the master data and pull out and get those details so that you don't type and it will not go wrong that is our main idea the main idea is not to type 10 times check this out clearly given master data is generally not typed by the user it is selected from an available list that is for example if you want to debit a particular ledger debit ledger name is selected from the available list of ledger if ledger is not created user needs to create it first and then complete the 
voucher entry so first you have to create the master data and then you have to make the entry master data entry is usually done less frequently maybe once in a year or where there is a need to update there is no rule that you have to do it only once in a year it can be more than one year or it can even be you know like once in six months you want to update effective controls very important effective controls over master data entry could be a four i check four i check mean two people not those people who are wearing specs generally it is them no four eyes you know uh, not four i check here means two to people should be there one person's work has to be checked by the other remember segregation of duties that thing effective controls over master data entry would be a four i check where there is another person where there is another person who independently checks whether the master data entry is accurately done in the financial system of the company then non master data how about non master data is typed by the user example you want quantity sir last time you bought 10 quantity this time i want 15 who are you to tell me how much quantity i want so something that changes very often like the quantity is the best example non master data is typed by the user and not selected from the available list and it's non permanent and it keeps on changing again and again so till here i guess everybody can understand without any sort of confusion but now one very important example i'm going to give you i want all of you to concentrate sometimes watch this carefully even transaction data can be selected from a drop down list oh ho even transaction data can be selected from drop down list it seems based on the inputs available to the user for example in a grn that is goods receipt note you will receive goods and a grn is prepared right so for example when a grn is created by the stores or warehouse personnel they might select only the open purchase orders available in the system and input the actual quantities received in this case many fields required to complete the transaction is pre filled by the system and user is not allowed to edit those fields like name of the vendor how much you already received how much you received now what is the balance date all these are not editable fields why should you edit all those they automatically will come in only thing is you have to select against which purchase order you received goods so can we select it yes now instead of just reading out that for you i would definitely want to show you that and i want you to be very clear on this one because easy concentrate here small example okay when we want to buy goods we'll raise a purchase order so remember purchase order number 415 we will go with some 112 let's start with something random i'm picking up okay then 415 113 Four one five one fourteen, one one five one one six, so on up till this. Then each PO has a quantity: two hundred, four hundred, two hundred again, hundred, five hundred, and so on. Now, these purchase orders are already entered in the, uh, you know, wherever they are supposed to be entered. Now the big question comes: whenever we receive the goods. when we receive the goods what is that we are passing we are passing a grn correct grn number 26754 some random number okay now the big question is against which po did you receive the goods so grn number 26754 was raised against the po number 415112 sir for how much quantity 100 sir what nonsense you are talking we raised an order for 200 to matlab our uh, this one fellow supplier he right now has 100 he sent 100 okay now which is exactly why they are talking about this example this is all transaction data now few days later we received one more meanwhile so many grns are raised now we are in this 26784 Maybe a thirty years later. Let it be any time. Now tell me, which PO number will come here? Several POs might have got done, no? 
so in the meanwhile we received 415113 under you know like some 62 grn we received 400 quantity so this is done completely this po is also fulfilled like that some orders are fulfilled some are pending now a few days later let's say here you have a drop down like this and you click the drop down okay the benefit of using all this so many colors are there you went and click this now tell me the moment they click this what all will come here 4151121116 and then 117118 whatever open pos yet to receive goods they are there so let's say we selected this 415112 and then you saw quantity will you be able to enter 200 here no no because the po itself is for 200 already received 100 so for a balance 100 tomorrow an auditor comes when he checks whether the goods are received against a po correctly so if this cross verification is done 415112 po had 200 quantity and this 200 quantity was received wide two grns one is 26754 and one is 26784 and so these two grns had 100 each so quantity total 200 matching and order quantity was 200 matching so that's how this purchase order gets fulfilled and closed this part though it is transaction data because we have only finite number of pos left because we have only finite number of pos left we can select it from the drop down and that is exactly why it is becoming uh, drop down in this case otherwise you normally have to type it by hand since this kind of facility is there so sometimes i am just trying to justify this point that they told you here okay i hope everybody can clearly understand this example so now going back i want you to read this again along with me for example when grn is created by stores or warehouse people they might only select the open purchase orders which are available they might only select the open purchase orders available in the system and input actual quantities received in this case many fields will automatically be filled master data is selected from available list of masters to maintain standardization as i told you sandeep name should be standardized means what it should be whenever that person that is why in most companies no employees their names are relevant they'll be given one employee code that is important because that is unique names will be same sir initials some people initials also are same so if somebody says m sandeep somebody another m sandeep is there then so you know in, why do you want to go to name go to a unique number no employee id employee number so it's just pretty unique story done so master data is selected from available list of ledgers to maintain standardization as we need to collect all the transactions relating to one master data at one place for example all cash transactions are collected in cash ledger for this purpose and uh, all transactions relating to capital are collected in capital ledger while inputting the information user is forced to select the master data from available list so that you don't make mistakes then you don't get you know you don't tag the wrong page or you don't do end up anything funny while inputting the information user is forced to select the master data from available list just to avoid confusion while preparing reports because the same ledger name may be written differently as i just told you i saw this mistake in hell a lot of my client who use tally because they create accounts sundry debtors they'll write such horrible spelling for that some fellows you know they'll write drs some fellow will write debtors some fellow will write debitors <laughs> so horrible so why should you give them a chance to enter whenever they choose from drop down sundry debtors one only will be there no choose from that okay i hope everybody is clear with this concept of why should we have master data and non master data now next five 10 minutes there is some time pass activity because they are now talking about what is a voucher voucher in accounting what is debit and credit what is a contra entry that you did in the three column cash book i am not at all interested in discussing this 1.3.2 topic with you so i will leave leave means not leave it to you i know you will not read if i leave it to you later 
for now only what is the voucher any document that supports a particular transaction voucher is a documentary evidence of a transaction basically the invoice followed by a voucher anyway first i want you to quickly run through the entire concept of master data non master data that is transaction data and then the last question why master data and non master data it is already asked in the exam there are all possibilities it can come in your exam also so please take a quick read at that and then come down to all the voucher types that is also your job only the next one inventory types also i'll make you read because there are a lot of things that you already know at least i'm guessing that you know okay chalo quick i want you to read the or run through quickly that so that we can come down is voucher types which is again as i told you uh, i don't know why, why even they give you all this but here there is a purpose why they gave this little later when we discuss erp all this will be helpful so please take a couple of minutes and quickly do this fast very easy voucher is nothing but a documentary evidence the transaction there may be different documentary evidences for different type of transactions you know that so when we pay money we'll get a receipt like that same way when we receive cash we generate a receipt so receipt given to customer after making payment is a documentary evidence of the amount received when you buy goods you will obviously get a invoice right the proof of you buying a goods a sales invoice purchase invoice are all documentary evidence of a transaction journal voucher so if it doesn't fall in the category of uh, sales purchase or any other subsidiary book categories then it will go in the general ledger category correct so a journal voucher is documentary evidence of a non cash or bank transaction for example you want to post a depreciation entry or you want to post a provision entry so then you will use what is called as a jv or journal voucher so basically lot of voucher types are there without any hesitation we will discuss this now i hope you guys know three column cash book you did contra entries whenever you withdraw cash from bank or deposit cash in bank cash transfer from one location to the other basically the effect is nullified there's no effect and since there is no effect overall you but have to still show the entry such entries are called contra entry payment entry receipt entry so basically you will have payment voucher and receipt voucher whenever they are happening then we have a journal voucher as you just read then sales purchase both of those vouchers now you know sales returns and purchase returns are two important uh, transaction that may happen credit note okay is uh, issued for wherein for making changes or correction in already recorded sales or purchase transaction debit note i hope you know what credit note and debit note are okay credit note for somebody who is already credited Yeah, so earlier you debited like sales debtors now this is happening what so you are now telling them that whosoever has been debited earlier we are now crediting you and sending a credit note to them the opposite of that is a debit note when you do purchases you would have credited somebody but now when purchase returns are happening you will be like okay we'll raise a debit note so from 1 to 8 all those are accounting related vouchers which i believe you already know because you pass a lot of journal entries moving from there is exclusively what we are talking about inventory oriented vouchers if you can see that talk about what inventory oriented vouchers what are those purchase order sales order stock journals physical receipt of stock that is after the stock counting takes place what is the physical count of stock that one delivery note now delivery note is a document that is generated when goods are delivered to a customer when customer sends you an order according to the order you will pack the goods and then you will go and deliver it right what is the proof of delivery this delivery note like how grn or goods receipt note is a proof of we receiving goods delivery note is a proof that we delivered the goods to the right person at the right time purchase order sales order stock journal physical stock receipt note all these are pertaining to inventory type of vouchers 15th one is a memorandum voucher you know memorandum right you prepared memorandum trading account when you don't want to do something original we'll go with this memorandum for transactions which will be in the system but will not affect the trial balance they called memorandum transactions you know we'll maintain a memorandum account for goods sent on sale or return basis we don't know it will be sold or it will be returned right 
so for goods and on sale or return or for any aspects where you are not 100% certain we'll go for a memorandum account then attendance and payroll are both hr related area vouchers everybody did they come to the office or not nowadays what people do is you know they swipe their card across or they put their fingerprint into the system when you take out the this one what do you say uh report month in how many days you came when you logged in when you logged out all the details will be there in that that's what is attendance and pay so just a list of names of all the different types of vouchers that are used in business have been given not only that they gave you a quick insight on what a voucher number is like how each of us have a name which will help us identify ourselves or which will help us go tell people that i am so and so same way here voucher number a voucher number or document number is a unique identity is what a unique identity of any voucher or document a voucher may be identified or searched using its unique voucher number which is easy you know everybody will have a unique voucher number but again voucher number there's a particular way how to uh, put up let us understand some of the points first one voucher number must be unique each voucher type should have separate numbering series for sales purchases for everything we should not have a common voucher series we should have a separate voucher series so that you know that is where they go for purchases slash or pur slash or pur slash 2021 slash what is the number so why do you have unique voucher numbers like that so that you can easily identify a voucher number may have a prefix or suffix anything it can you know have prefix or suffix like for example imp slash 034 slash 1718 so it's a voucher it's an import voucher purchased uh, pertaining to 1718 34th one it's just an interpretation there need not be any rule like that you can have your own voucher numbers all voucher numbers must be serially recorded 1 2 3 4 5 6 serially all vouchers are recorded in chronological order one after the other all vouchers are recorded in chronological order and hence voucher recorded earlier must have an earlier number depending on that it's a simple time stamp thing which uh, whichever occurs first voucher number also should be in order okay 3.4 is a very difficult topic because uh, all our life we have been finding that only as a most difficult thing once again they are reminding you the accounting flow the first thing that happens that we will pass a uh, first transaction will happen i'm sorry yeah first we'll have a transaction will happen and based on the transaction a voucher is raised based on that voucher that is nothing but a journal entry is made posted to the ledger ledgers are then balanced the trial balance is prepared and then you will finally prepare balance sheet and pnl nowadays all this aspect of posting from the journal to the ledger from that ledger to all the led- sub ledgers and from there preparing trial balance and then a balance sheet and pnl you don't have to break your head for all this only softwares are there nowadays so software can handle this part which part the 3 4 5 part software can easily handle nothing to do or uh, nothing to take any tension there okay wherein if you look at 1 and 2 how will system even know that uh, uh, what do you say transaction took place and then entry should be made so the occurrence of the transaction and entry of the initial entry of the initial means at the journal level they both are human you can see it here see these two steps these are human because the occurrence of a transaction and voucher entry both are obviously you know uh, something that has to be initiated by the man only no in the sense we should as a human being do that then once you post that journal entry just think of a software like tally now in tally also pick up the journal uh, debit account credit account and then say enter from there going to the ledgers from there to trial balance balance sheet p and l everything it will take care so two parts to this flow the accounting flow you now i am not talking about whether you know the accounting flow or not some of you might be studying commerce from 11th standard so ever since then you are seeing the okay some of you might have come from a different stream and all but some of you might even see from 11th so from long time we are seeing what is the accounting flow so today i am not here to tell you or discuss on what is the accounting flow in my subject how is it relevant uh, in my subject is relevant to identify which part of this entire flow system can do and which part of this human being has to initiate so human being has to initiate that occurrence of a transaction and its entry from there on everything can be taken as per the flow in the software 
got it are you guys clear on this one ha huh? to to wind up this we have types of ledgers which you all know very uh, you know debit ledgers and credit ledgers debit ledgers we have asset ledgers and expense ledgers and the credit ledgers are income and liability expenses and income go to pnl assets and liability go to balance sheet the word sheet is missing if you want you can write down okay broadly any ledger will fall under these four heads only either it should be an asset either it should be an expense or it should be an income or it should be a liability so if you group ledgers it should fall under these four categories only grouping of ledgers at the time of creation of any new ledger at the time of creation of any new ledger it must be placed under a particular group it must be placed under what a particular group there are four basic groups in accounting income expense asset and liability there may be any number of subgroups under these four under assets you can have fixed asset current asset investment under liabilities you can have long term liabilities current liabilities and uh, expenses you have so many heads of expenses you know much better than what i do grouping is important because all this is the way to tell the software what is the nature of the ledger so when you create a ledger is it an asset is it a liability is it an income is it an expense out of this four which are you grouping it to that is very important creating ledger is not a problem once you create a ledger to which group this is related you have to and that is how it will be shown in the time of reporting if you group it to liability it will show under liabilities so you created capital ledger no some time back we discussed that example so when you create capital ledger you will group it to liabilities you create fixed asset ledger you group it to assets so that and then in fixed asset we have sub ledgers plant and machinery so okay why should i show it by way of actions when we have a great chance to show everything here on screen why take tension give me a minute we will so when you see that the um, that in a particular account is created let's say we are creating plant and machinery now when you are creating a ledger like plant and machinery where this plant and machinery will be connected to plant and machinery will be connected to fixed asset correct now fixed assets is one of the categories of assets this is how grouping happens okay i'll tell you one more example this is about assets right we'll talk about expenses printing and stationery so printing and stationery this will be going to indirect expenses indirect expenses and indirect expenses in turn linked into the broader head called expenses end of the day this column whatever you see here no they will have only four okay asset expense either it should be a liability or it should be a income that's all you have so many of those sub ledgers and you know what is the ultimate one but it will all finally come under these four that's when you prepare a pnl uh, and then of course the balance sheet now nobody is preparing t shape i just put it across for your understanding are you clear guys so this is exactly how we use this particular topic but anyway apart from why master data and non master data there is no real serious exam question so understand what is master data what is non master data and both the definitions are very important and then the question why should you have master data and non master data separately that discussion of five six points that can probably be a question in the exam rest of that vouchers ledgers all those are for your understanding just have a, a you know quick look at all of those because the things are very easy topic right so you should not be any complication there then we will move on to one of the very very interesting topics of this chapter called the technical concepts before i discuss the technical concepts take a minute to quickly run through all of those topics in the first lot that we discussed so that we are absolutely sure about what we have discussed then we'll move on to technical concepts starting with how does a software work what is the flow of a software working with a very uh, beautiful example they've explained it and that's also been an exam question so i want you to stay very alert but after a minute of your quick review of the entire topic that we discussed till now of master and non master data come on fast so this one right here is a topic which is actually uh, you know though they headed it as technical they didn't go in detail in telling you really as to how a software works and all that they gave you a broader outlook now 
and again i don't think uh, you will find it very difficult because we all are using so many softwares we are playing so many games so there are so many ways how you guys are acquainted to a software so i don't have to tell you what is the working of a software correct so let's pick up an example like whatsapp very quickly i hope all of you are somehow or the other using whatsapp that's why i'm not even going to facebook or instagram some people don't use all that so whatsapp now there are two things to the story something that happens in front of your eyes something that happens somewhere we don't know where it is but it happens somewhere correct now i picked up my phone and typed one text eventually it has to reach you so you know the process from me it will go to my service provider whoever is my service provider let's like say i'm on my uh, wifi so act fiber net are providing me the connection so through their servers it will be routed if i'm on my 4g i'm using airtel or jio whatever through them so some service provider so the moment i type something in whatsapp through whoever the carrier is if i'm connected to the wifi or on 4g depending on that they will take it to the whatsapp servers correct so from my phone when i send a text that is a whatsapp text it has to go to the whatsapp server now also i will be able to send this text to another person who is on whatsapp obviously so the moment my text reaches whatsapp servers then an outgoing signal is awaited like from whatsapp servers it will reach the recipient now recipient if he is on wifi or 4g then the message from whatsapp servers is passed on to those servers and from there it will be passed on to the device which can also be pretty much tracked now because you have single tick double tick and blue tick so which is also very easy the moment text leaves from my device correct all of you know this right so that is why i'm making it life more easy so when you send a text the first when it leaves you get a single tick that means it's reached the whatsapp server but it hasn't found an outgoing signal because the other party is not ready to receive it maybe they kept the phone on flight mode or whatever or their wifi is not turned on 4g is not there some reason from you it has gone but it hasn't reached the other party now let's say it has reached the other party then you will get a couple of ticks which means what the server is giving a confirmation that this message is not only sent by you it's also delivered to the other person and uh, i mean like one of the killer features is a blue ticks because of which a lot of people fight okay chalo anyways the point being that we are being given a indication now of course you are given uh, what do you say the options to turn off all the blue ticks and all you guys know this much better so all i'm saying is that's not the point that we are discussing i'm saying the moment you see blue ticks which means the recipient has also read it so till the recipient reads it everything is being tracked you should understand now after that also it will be tracked and one of the fantastic things that whatsapp tells is end to end encryption today is not the time for us to discuss that it will come uh, it will in the sense there is a discussion on encryption later i will discuss it with you at that point of time but all i am saying is the working of a software as a flow the part in my example where you type the text and hit the enter button you can see this with your eyes the recipient when they receive the text the recipient when they receive the text they can read it they can see it on screen that's all these are the only two things that are visible agreed these are the only two things that are visible and there is something happening which we can't see this is like sir something is happening in background i'm not able to see a oh, background no this is called back end recently we have so many cases where system faced outages outage means what whatsapp servers are not responding too much load on them whatsapp servers were not responding so you were able to send the text but you are not getting a single tick or a double tick nothing is happening and you many people what they will do no they'll check their wifi they switch it on and off then they'll go on 4g and see then they'll restart their phone and see i guess you might also be a victim of this but the problem is not with your phone or anything see, whatsapp servers themselves are not responding okay why did i explain very clearly with this example is we got to pick up from there only something that you can see happening in your 
uh, you know device as a technical name for that called as foreground processing so why such complicated name and all keep it simple now okay front end as you see there working of every software is broken to front end and back end okay but before getting to front end and back end what is this all about let's see as nowadays almost all the financial and accounting systems are computerized nobody maintains physical books of accounts and all except for you guys who are maintaining all that uh, that's only till your exam once you are done once you are into the practical world nobody puts a pen on paper and does anything everything is all computerized it is necessary to understand how does it work so for all of you who might have raised that question sir let the software work anyway what's your problem uh, many in, in the past no some people used to tell me sir i am driving a vehicle i don't even know how that works i am driving no why should i know how it is working don't tell us stupid logics correct only no if i drive a car i don't know how the car is made uh, how actually the story i'm just and like there are hell a lot of people in millions who play games on smartphones and all do you i mean like think of it how this game is designed what might be the codes that they have used did they use a java platform or a python did we think of all this simply game is coming or playing this so you can still behave like that and say why should i know about accounting systems sir they are working no i am giving input they are giving output what is your problem why do you want to waste time on so i am not wasting again i am telling i am not we are not wasting time here we are supposed to understand the process because not only the input and output if there is any flaw in the process then every transaction goes wrong no so which is why this has to be addressed a little carefully we are going to understand the technical concepts from the perspective of a non technical person or a layman uh, that means they are talking about you only here in this particular you i mean okay i am nothing to demean so but again going by that line in this example you are only that non technical layman person who doesn't understand so it sounds like you are scolding i am not scolding your book only is it's telling that you don't know so please understand uh, so this topic is discussed in the context of a layman who does not understand the technicalities nor he wants to go into technical details so i'll give you one uh, quick example here as to uh, what this point is so back then uh, i got a smartphone for my mom she is not impressed with uh, all this because she is not well versed with any of the technology and also she used to use a nokia phone so she like no 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 i am very happy with this keypad phone i will get, some of my friends will call so we'll just talk and drop it why do i want all this i don't want this was the first time when i told her that we'll buy a smartphone she said no 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 all that i don't know how to use all that just touch phone is all i don't want unnecessary it's a few obviously a few years back okay then i said no 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 things are changing maybe you know keypad phones may not be existing in future and uh, every the entire working of this will change so you know you have to adopt she like no no i am too old to adopt to all so i said like start use the same thing call and talk that only you use in the process if you want to learn anything you can learn okay so somehow i got her a basic uh, you know not very high end or all that normal uh, to start off kind of a samsung smartphone so initially obviously as like every elder she will find it difficult for some time now she is really not bothered about how it's working as they told in the first paragraph she doesn't want all they want is the output so i want to call somebody what should i press or what should i touch from there it evolved to such a phase now she is on facebook instagram whatsapp where not wherever i am not there also she is there it's a matter of time how did things evolve and don't ask me she plays uh, what is that candy crush and back then she used to play something like temple run all on this device and then she's telling one day suddenly spawn screen is too small get me a tab and you won't believe i got one and then she's still playing so many games in there now neither they know how the game works nor they know how the software is written so you can't obviously go and uh, you know explain all that because it's not needed she says game this game very simple what should you do hurdles will come we just have to push the guy that's all job done so what does it mean the user of a software will never 
unless he's a non i mean unless he's a technical guy who wants to understand but for that 95% of the general public they don't want to have an understanding sir accounting professional also included okay in this example that i told you it's a quite a story like what i told you is a story in every household for so many people many people who told that no 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 i don't want this touch phone today are not leaving the phone also correct they're, and they are there on every social app and they, they download so many things and they you know like what all they do and few years back these are the same people who said i don't want so how did things change because these are very easy a revolution in the field of uh, using apps things became way more easier the gaming industry early 2000s to 2010s to now in the 2020s gaming industry became a billion dollar industry because of these soft and easy games but how the hell is all this working so you know sometimes they uh, she comes up with some doubt you know the score is not getting updated or you know here something has to come it is not coming so that's exactly where two things come there are so many things that happen on your screen which is called as front end part of the processing which you can see so user using a front end will communicate our mode of communication is touch now you can even communicate with voice now, i don't want to tell something because suddenly the phone will start now if i tell something automatically you know the google voice assistant will start off so if you give a command or you can tell alexa to do whatever i mean it needs to do so what are all these ways of input but sir when i am telling something to alexa how does it understand now i hope you guys know what alexa siri google assistant all these are they are all artificial intelligence system which are capable of taking instructions now you being the user as a front end using this platform communicate your point in the back end there is all the data that is stored which will help it in processing and now back end is totally technical back end will process and send it back to the front end front end will show it to the user simple sir does user and back end talk now as you see on your screen it's very clear out there user and back end there is no connection only they didn't draw any line you can see a clear connection between user talking to the front end front end talking to the back end back end again communicating to the front end that's all that's the critical part got it so there is no connection with the user and the back end let us read the text so that will clarify it even better the two words that software people use again and again let us understand this in simple language front end it is that part of the software which actually interacts with the user who is using the software so how will they interact obviously through you know various modes are there some people have menu some people have uh, you know what do you say dashboard now it is fancy names are given for that the way you interact with that particular software is called as front now whatsapp you touch and interface with it or any games you touch and play so touch is the interface voice can be the interface drawing can be the interface any interface back end look at back end little extra explanation is given for the back end check this out back end is the overall part of the software which does not directly interact with the user but it interacts with the front end only but it interacts with the front end only if a user wants to if a user wants to have some information from the system like you want to pull out the balance sheet what you will do is to go type a bar called as reports and reports will show all that balance sheet p and l cash flow which are you type on balance sheet okay anyway uh just take some minute here so we will quickly see it because you can remember it longer when you see it on screen so moving up what are we doing here if you want to extract a report what all will you do there there is a title bar with so many of those actions right let's say one of those bars is report so first you will click on report and then report will give you a drop down means what all reports the system will be able to give system will be able to give you balance sheet system will be able to give you pnl system will be able to give you cash flow statement debtors anything any report that depends on the features so first you will go and click on this so click one will be on report then this drop down will come then this will be your click two now the moment you click on both these immediately balance sheet is going to come and throw up 
of course that depends on the processing speed now inside there is a back end system which will be a place where all this is stored all the content now what will back end do understand what the user asked in the first click when he clicked on report back end understood that you want a report in the second click when you clicked on balance sheet back end understood that you want the balance sheet now whatever is stored in the back end will be communicated back to the front end that is on the screen you will now be able to see balance sheet as on whatever date you give that will be visible okay if you go and ask the system something that it can't deliver error message will be generated as simple as that okay so this is what is front end and back end part of the story the same thing is given even in uh, the explanation here so if you quickly see what the explanation is one user will interact with the front end part of the software request generate the report front end will receive this instruction pass it on to the back end back end will process the data generate the report send it back to the front end front end will now display the information to the user I think more than the text i showed you better by showing the flow first we'll click on the report then drop down will come we'll click on balance sheet both will be communicated to the back end back end will pull out all the details of balance sheet and throw it back on screen what it this is how the process gets completed each time so this is for your quick information as to what is front end and back end what is front end and back end but the bigger question and the question that came in exam is this one i want you to highlight this why there should be a separate back end and front end why not have a single space and don't you think that's too complicated by its name only it is showing up it's a complicated uh, issue to have both in one sir then what should we do simple have both front end and back end they uh, you know i like this concept because here they picked up a very beautiful example very easy to you know justify five reasons are there not one five reasons are there and to justify that they picked up a help of a restaurant sir why restaurant came uh, because restaurant also has a front end and back end waiter will come to you he'll pick up your order go inside the kitchen is the waiter going to change the clothes there and he do, does he start uh, you know doing the cook cooking i mean no right there is a chef inside who does that because he is an expert in that he'll just take the order the waiter because waiter's job is to talk to you politely give you all the options you know uh, give you clarity not confuse you i have gone to many restaurants where the waiter will confuse you so if you ask him which one is better out of this and this he'll give you so much information that you don't need that you will not feel like eating that dish only so yeah they should be polite they should be you know able to talk they should be able to make you understand what it is the chef is inside he doesn't even need to talk and he is he is standing in kitchen obviously right so he is working in a condition he can't obviously remove all his uh, kitchen dress and then you know remove all the cap and then dress like a waiter and come out and serve then take the order then again go inside wear all the he will do his job this fellow will do his job. what is this called expertise subject area expertise i think i told you somewhere the subject area is called domain domain means specific subject area those of you who don't know please write it down there domain means what domain is a specific subject area you can write it down there the first and foremost reason why we should have separate front end and back end is that only domain expertise for example in a restaurant a waiter is an expert in handling customers while a cook is expert in cooking these two jobs are separate and should not be mixed with each other and should not be mixed with each other both these jobs must be performed with topmost quality what should you do both of these should be performed with topmost quality same story with software front end software is meant for handling the request from user while back end software is meant for storing and handling the data subject area experts front end will only do the talking back end will do only processing and storage okay fair enough expertise going by the expertise or subject area expertise two let's move on to the second factor presentation a waiter can present himself as well as food in a better way everybody likes good presentation one cannot expect a good presentable cook as he or she works in the kitchen 
you seen that no they'll be sweating from here one will, their hair will be okay not everybody but generally okay so it's very uh, horrible to sometimes see if you see that you will not feel like eating I, i hope you guys know what i'm talking about anyway i don't want to delve deeper into this point but you guys know it there are many places where if you see the making you will not feel like even taking a bite but as long as you're standing outside you want to eat fully mostly this uh, you know fast food and all that now i think many of you must have lost interest in all that but so many days are over you know like throughout the pandemic they are closed and now we are really afraid to go and eat outside and all so anyway all i'm saying is chalo it's a face but point to be noted is waiter will do his job cook will do his job presentation front end software interacting with user is meant for presenting information in a proper way like it gives in the form of tables charts graphs use attractive colors front end will do all that using different colors bold italic tables charts back end is all technical back end software is not meant for it and it cannot be expected back end will do the processing that's all got it then third one user experience if you want the user experience to be smooth you need two people to handle the story waiter handles the processed food and not raw material whole process of getting the order i mean right from uh, ordering to billing should move smoothly and user experience should be very good this is supposed to be done by a well trained waiter you can't expect this from a cook if user has to feel the experience then like the way you present the food and all that that's why five star hotels charge a lot the fellow will do unnecessary overaction who the waiter there correct yes or no when they tend to be so polite with you over polite and they do everything and where normally you have a habit of eating with both the hand like this in your house if you go there be like they'll give you so many spoons and forks and all that and then they'll tie up something to your neck put some cloth on eating in five star is like testing your patience and i've seen people cut some traditional south indian food like dosa and idli with a knife and then take a fork and dip it I'm like what are you even doing okay so that that is the kind of behavior a place will uh, you know attract to so there if your experience is to be smooth because of the environment nothing more than that i'm i mean like if somebody takes a knife and cut something like a dosa and then put a fork into it you know like turn it two three times are you eating noodles so don't really realize what you're doing there but so because of the ambience and the place there you tend to be over and that fellow also is serving you he'll make sure that you know a rich customer experience this is called user experience you just have to feel good about what you are doing why you are doing nobody will ask software also the ultimate usage when you see on screen it should be attractive that's when you will stay with the software no if you don't then what is there you'll jump off to another app front end software should guide a user to pick up a desired report now i'm going on searching where is the report tab where is the report uh, sometime back we saw no click on the report tab then click on balance sheet i'm not finding report tab only so there only user will be like oh no this software is stupid we will buy another so smooth experience should be there that's what we are trying to bring it up here okay the very simple point front end software should guide the user to a desired report front end software handles process data and not raw data user interface on the front end software needs to be intuitive that is minimum help should be sought by the user everything should be visible on the screen fourth point is a very simple one is called speed obviously if one fellow is handling both cooking and delivery practically it is sounding stupid but also it will take a lot of time after placing the order customer expects a quick delivery of food nobody likes waiting period this is only possible when there is segregation of duties waiter will handle customers only cook will keep cooking only not only that when somebody does the same job more and more taking a memory back to strategic management remember what we studied as experience curve repeating the same activity again and again will increase expertise and efficiency learning curve effects or experience curve effects so of course if two parts front end and back end are there speed will definitely be a great using single software for both aspects will unnecessarily increase the load and slow down the speed 
separate front end and back end is used to hand i mean back end is used only to handle data this reduces the load and increases the speed of operations expertise presentation user experience speed and most importantly language back end i told you sometime back the statement no i don't care if the program is written in java or python or xyz i don't care because i don't know all the technical languages for me what i see on screen makes sense that's it a waiter needs to be polished and polite he or she needs to understand the language of customer and speak to the customer in the language in which the customer is comfortable cook has got nothing to do with this aspect for example let's say cook can't speak cook by birth can't speak any problem not a problem because he is not the one who is handling that right cook has nothing to do with this aspect as he is not interacting with the customers his job only is to prepare the best quality food front end speaks the language understood by the user that is why we have graphics charts tables i mean easy to operate menus so just go and click sir i want report click on that that's all what is the way of you telling the system that i want this report we are you going to any coding uh, mechanism and typing you are just going and clicking no and then uh, let's talk about some games you are tipping i mean you are talking about hitting the start then in meanwhile somebody call you said pause resume by clicking all that what are you telling you are directly giving the instruction sir when i click resume how is it continuing the game from there now i think some of you guys play high end games where you can save the game after a particular uh, place like say we play this game like gta for example you have reached and covered a particular level or few levels you want to save the game for that day and continue tomorrow we do that correct how does the system continue from the next day there only so this is what the back end does okay back end takes a note of that frame and it keeps data of what you did so that your score will continue you are i think will continue you understanding so front end speaks the language understood by the user and understands the language spoken by the back end so this front end is a mediator as you can see it in the diagram here it's very clear front end is a mediator user will talk to front end front end to back end back end again back to front end again to the user so that's exactly where the entire story is back end speaks in technical language not understood by layman so front end can speak in these languages and user language and both technical languages so that is exactly why we have both front end and back end very very simple topic i would like to give you a shortcut also to remember this uh, the five points here as to why you need front end and back end i call it as pulse p u l s e the five words presentation user experience language speed and expertise expertise means domain expertise like domain itself means specific subject area told you to write sometime back those of you who didn't write please write it down now specific subject area specific subject area is called domain if you have specific subject area knowledge you are called a domain expert so you need to have all these five and which is one of the reasons why you should have these five points so why front end and back end a very beautiful example of a restaurant is given to make our life more easy with waiter and cook they explain the technical concept so simply with this particular topic so that's a very nice way of explaining you can say and that brings us to the end of technical concept number 1 as to working of a software you have nothing to worry much about what is an application software we will discuss that in detail uh, again in a later part of the syllabus also but anyway in the beginning we will discuss this application software but what's coming up as one more important technical concept is the difference between an installed and a web application nowadays many people don't install uh, applications in their uh, system because everything is on the cloud or you can do it on the web so when you can obviously do it on the web like you guys store some of the photos in google photos one drive there are a lot of online places where you store right why sir we should store it on our device and you know where is the place we store it online we'll put it on google drive so what earlier was done on the device physically can now be done on the web and lot more interesting aspects are there like for example i'll give you a quick one uh, you want to convert a word document into a pdf document you don't have the converter 
what's the next best thing that you will do you will go on to google and simply type convert word to pdf so many websites will pop up you will click one of the websites upload your word document it will convert and then give you the pdf document you will download it but where did it convert so it converted on the server so the software was on the server so you without even having the software by using something called a web application you are able to get the job done when web applications are helping you to get the job done why do you have to have an installed application another important exam question is the difference between installed applications and web application seven point difference is there we will see which one is better or which one is not but all i want you guys to honestly do is please go through this chapter because it's a very very easy uh, one and when these kind of uh, things you know you have to be stronger so that we can score more marks i'll catch up with uh, installed versus web applications in our next segment wherein we will discuss all those seven points and then go off to the title of this integrated and non integrated systems and then there is a whole new story that expands non integrated means only one it's not connected and all that so that creates a lot of uh, chaos when you're working sometimes it's not helpful integrated system where everything is connected there some problems are there because everything is connected and we are going to discuss integrated systems in greater detail in the later part of this chapter that's where concepts like erp will come in so a lot of interesting topics are lined up in this chapter go through the basics once again and be strong i'll catch up in the next session we will come back and discuss the installed versus web application